Hey guys, welcome to Tabletop Warbands! This is the first battle report of the 10th edition here on the channel. The past few weeks we'd have commitments and unfortunately we had to skip some videos, but we took the opportunity to work on the Leviathan box that you'll see in this battle report. In this video we are playing Warhammer 40k 10th edition using the contents of the Leviathan box, which fits the Space Marines against the Tyranids. I'm Simone and I will be playing the Marines. Hi, I'm Andrea and I will be playing the Tyranids. Before we start, if you are subscribed to the channel, welcome back! If you are not subscribed yet and want to help us, join our growing community now by clicking on the subscribe button. And don't forget to activate the bell so you don't miss the next battle reports! Thank you guys! Stay with us until the end of the video because we will need your help with a decision to make! We'd also like to remind you that this month's 40k battle report, exclusive to Patreon members, will see a rematch between the two armies you'll see today. If you want to enjoy another battle rap, the Patreon link is in the description. But now, let's get back to the game! Today's mission is Hammer and Anvil. The two armies have to deploy within these two areas. There are five objectives and they are arranged in this way. As secondary missions, Space Marines have chosen two fixed missions, Assassination and Bring It Down, while the Tyranids have tactical missions, Extend Battle Lines and Secure No Man's Land. The primary mission of this match is Sets of Power. Each player will get 3 victory points for each controlled objective and 3 additional victory points if there are characters near the central objectives. As a special rule there is sweep and clear. If a player controls an objective at the end of his command phase, it will remain under his control even if there are no models in range of it. Let's move on to the description of the armies. A detachment of space marines who have just arrived on the planet Esperia following a call for help launched by the planet's governor have been tasked with dealing with the growing threat of the Tyranids who are advancing city after city devouring all life. The goal of the space marines is to get as much information as possible about the strength of this fleet and try to slow down its advance. The general of this army is a captain in terminator armor equipped with relic weapon and storm bolter. Also following him is a librarian in terminator armor. It is always helpful to have a Psyker to deal with the mental threats of the Tyranids. An apothecary biologist accompanies the detachment, his task of recovering the gene seed of the brothers who fell in battle is extremely important, no one is left behind. Rounding off the characters is the lieutenant with combi weapon. The main unit of the detachment consists of 10 space marines belonging to the Inferno squad, armed with pyre blasters. They will be a serious threat to the Tyranids' horde infantry. Then there's the Sterngarn veteran squad made up of 5 models, one of which is armed with a heavy bolter. The strongest squad I have is the Terminators, 4 models armed with storm bolters and one model armed with a storm bolter plus the cyclone missile launcher. Finally, as heavy support is a Ballistus Dreadnought, a model I rely heavily on to eliminate the heavyweights of the Tyranid army. The Tyranids have found a huge area of crops and are heading to consume it, but once again, a group of space marines got in the way. When will they realize that getting between a hungry Tyranid and his male is not a good idea? The leader of the army is a Neurotyran, equipped with Psychic Scream and Neurotyran Close and Lashes. As an announcement, he has Synaptic Lynchpin, which increases his synapse range by 3 inches. Then we have a Winged Tyranid Prime, who is armed with Prime Talons and has the announcement Adaptive Biology, which gives him the ability Feel No Pain at 5+. To support the characters, there's a Psychophage armed with Psychoclastic Torrent and Talons and Bitentacled Mo. The last big model of the army is a Screamer Killer, a scary unit from the distance, but even scarier when in combat. The core of this army are two Thermagans units of 10 models each, all armed with Flash Borer and Xenos Claws and Teeth. Then we have the Barb Gowns, 5 bioartilleries who can slow the movement of the enemies with each shot. Next in line there's the Neurogans unit, 11 little beings that can help extend the range of the synapse to help the team. Then there's the Von Ryan Sleepers, 3 models armed with Deliver Stalons ready to jump on the enemies and wipe them out. Last but not least, we have a small unit of 2 Reaper Swarms who will act as a decoy. To better prepare for the battle, the fleet has appeared up to fight infantry units, meaning that for each time a model of my army makes an attack against an infantry unit, it has the ability to sustain hits 1. For each 6 on the hit roll, an additional hit is scored. Not knowing who will take the first turn, I decided to deploy my units as hidden as possible. I placed three characters including the General, along with the Inferno Squad and the Sterngard, behind the building, out of line of sight. On the right side instead, the Dreadnought is deployed, together with the squad of Terminators who are positioned behind the containers. The Librarian has joined their squad and will lead them into battle. 
I chose not to use the Terminator's Deep Strike ability, as I need as much firepower as early as the first turn. I have deployed the Wing Tyranid Prime outside the battlefield to avoid losing him in the first turn. The Nero Tyrant instead is inside the Neurogans unit, who will act as bodyguards. The rest of the army is positioned along the border of the drop zone. The bottom part is also out of sight behind the building, while the upper part is in cover behind the hangar. The Leapers have the possibility to deploy outside the drop zone thanks to the ability Infiltrators, but like the majority of the army, they're positioned out of sight behind the building. We roll for initiative, blue dice for space marines and red dice for tyranids. 4, not bad, just a simple one. The initiative is yours. In the common phase I gain the first common point, then I choose the doctrine that will be active this turn for my units and I choose Devastator Doctrine, my models will be able to fire even after advancing. For the Space Marines, the Oath of Moment rule is in effect. Each common phase I can pick an enemy unit. Until the start of my next common phase, my models can reroll hit and wound rolls against that unit. This turn I choose the Psychophage. Also, at the start of the first round, thanks to the Lieutenant's ability Priority Objective Identified, I can choose an objective. Until the end of the battle, the units that are within 6 inches of the Lieutenant and shooting at an enemy unit within range of the chosen objective, they can reroll wound dice of 1. For this skill, I choose Objective 3. The Inferno Squad is the first to move and advance towards the objective by making a 3 on the advance roll. They are perfectly within range and in control of the objective. The Stern Guard advances, they too roll a 3. The veterans position themselves inside the building, ready to fire on the enemy. The Lieutenant advances and catches up with the Inferno squad, staying as close as possible to the Stern Guard squad as well. The Captain moves normally approaching the center of the battlefield but remaining in cover. The Apothecary advances, but as there is not enough space, he decides to remain in cover of the building, just outside the structure. Thanks to the doctrine that allows my units to fire even after advancing, the Stern Guard opens the shooting phase and targets the Neuroguns. I don't want to lose too many models, so I spend one common point for this stratagem Rapid Regeneration and give the Neuroguns the ability to feel no pain at 5 plus until the end of the phase. 8 shots at 3 plus. 6 shots hit, strength 4 and toughness 3, wound at 3. 4 wounds. With penetration minus 1, I can't save. So I roll directly to ignore wounds at 5+. Plus. 2 wounds ignored. Now the heavy bolter, again on the Neuroguns. 3 shots at 4+. Plus. Only one. 3 plus to wound? Nope. First two models to leave the game. The captain fires the stone bolter on the Neuroguns. 2 shots at 2+. Plus. 1 hit. 3 plus to wound? Yes! No penetration this time, so save it with 6. Here it is! The Lieutenant also fires on the Neuroguns, one shot at 3+. Plus. Ok, now he needs 3 plus to wound. And he fails. Now let's dance, the Dreadnought opens fire with its two main weapons on the Psychophage. Let's start with the Ballistus missile launcher using the profile of the Krak, two shots at 3+. Plus. Both hit, with strength 10, a 3 is enough to wound. I can reroll the 2 due to the out of moment rule. Perfect, both wound. Minus 2 penetration and plus 1 for the cover. He saves with 4 plus. Just 1. D6 wounds? Ah, too bad, only 2. The Psychophage can ignore wounds at 5 plus. One wound ignored. It's the turn of the last cannon, 2 shots at 3 plus. I can reroll the 1 for the out of moment. Failed again, only 1. With strength 12, 3 plus to wound. Wounded! Saving at 5 plus this time. Nope. D6 plus 1 wounds. What? A little depressing. 2 total wounds. Ignoring again at 5 plus. Nope. 3 wounds suffered in total. It could have been worse. My turn. I had nothing to do in the common phase, so let's go straight to the movement phase. Thermagans near objective 3 advance, and with 4, they manage to reach the objective in front of them. As soon as the Thermagans finish moving, I use a common point to fire Overwatch at them with the Inferno Squad. Oh, this will be fun! Normally I would hit at 6 with the Overwatch, but the Inferno Squad is armed with the flamethrowers that hit automatically. That's D6 automatic shots each. 10 D6. 37 total hits, 
that unit is about to disappear. With strength 5 and toughness 3, a roll of 3 is enough to wound. I roll the dice in two groups. First group, 16 wounds. Second group, thanks to the lieutenant's ability, I can reroll all ones. 14 wounds in the second group, for a total of 30 wounds. Ouch! Splitting the 30 dice in two groups. First 15 saves at 5 plus. Just for saved. Second group. Four more wounds saved. Now, thanks to the Psychophages ability Biostimulus, they can ignore wounds at 6. Splitting again the dice into groups. First 11 dice at 6. Two wounds ignored. The other 11 dies. Just one. With 19 wounds suffered, the entire unit is wiped out of the battlefield. And now we can resume with my movement phase. The Psychophage goes inside the hangar, where the Neuro Tyrant and the Neurogans move 6 inches forward. The Reaper Swarms advance toward the central objective, and with 6, they reach it easily. The Screamer Killer goes a tiny bit forward while the other Thermagant unit advances. With 3, they manage to reach the objective 2 with no problems. The Leapers can't do anything, so they remain stationary hidden behind the building, while the Bub Guns move inside of it. In the shooting phase, my Psychophage tries to eliminate the Inferno Squad, making these 6 attacks that hit automatically thanks to the rule Torrent. Just 3 hits. With higher strength, I wound with 3 plus. 2 wounds. 2 wounds to save at 4 plus. I wound suffered. It could have been much worse. That's okay. Neuro Tyrant's turn to eliminate the Inferno Squad. 2 d6 shots that hit automatically. Nice shots. Wounding with 3 plus. 8 hits. Nice. Uh, this is worse than before. 8 shots to save at 4 plus. Oh, okay. 5 shots saved, 3 space marines dead, the unit is still above half strength. Now the barb gun solos on the same target, they shoot 5d6 attacks plus an additional one thanks to the rule blast. 14 shots at 4 plus, 6 hit, again higher strength so wounding with 3 plus, only 3. 3 plus to save on 3 dice, oops. Another dead. The Inferno Squad is attracting the whole Tyranid's shooting face, but they are still in good shape. The Screamer Killer also targets the Inferno Squad and makes D6 plus 3 plus 1 additional attacks thanks to the Rule Blast. 3. 7 shots total, hitting at 4 plus. 5 hit. Strength is double the toughness, so wound with 2. Just 2 wounds. Minus 2 penetration, then 5 plus to save. 1 shot saved and 1 not. 1 wound suffered. A small white dice for you. Since the Screamer Killer hit the Inferno Squad with a ranged attack, they have to take a battle shock test with a minus one thanks to the ability Death Scream. The Space Marines have leadership six, so I have to roll six or higher with two dice. Uh oh, that's a five. Test failed. The Thermagants are the last unit to shoot. They aim the Staring Garden inside the building and make eight shots at four plus since two models are not in range. Five hit. 3 plus to wound, 4 wounded, 3 plus save for the Sternguard, suffered 2 wounds, then another Space Marine leaves the battlefield. The first round went fairly well, starting first I was able to make little use of my shooting phase and I had to leave control of the center of the battlefield to the Tyranids, who earned victory points for this, but I couldn't do otherwise or I would have exposed myself too much to the possible charge of its units. In the second round, I will have more chances to do damage, and the Space Marines will be able to show their power. At the end of my turn, I gain 2 victory points for the mission Secure No Man's Land, since I control only one objective in No Man's Land. The Reaper Swarm have objective control 0, so they don't count unfortunately. Then I gain 5 more victory points for the mission Extend Battle Lines, reaching 7 points total. If I didn't lose the Thermagant unit in the movement phase, and if the Inferno Squad had suffered a little more wounds, this round was perfect but it wasn't, so let's hope for a better round 2. In the common phase, I again choose the Psychophage as the unit for the Out of Moment rule. Then I use a common point for Adaptive Strategy, and choose Devastator Doctrine for the Terminator's unit. This way they can access that Doctrine this turn, even if it has already been used. 
so they are able to advance and shoot. The Inferno Squad moves forward, positioning themselves to come within range of their weapons. The Lieutenant moves so that he can reach Objective 3 and take control of it, as the Inferno Squad has failed the Battleshock test. The Terminators advance and roll 1. I'm not satisfied, I use a common point to reroll. 4 is much better, so they can reach Objective 2 and contest it to the Termagants. The Terminators are really scary, better if I start to eliminate them. I spend one common point for the Overwatch. The Neuro Tyrant aims at the Terminators and fires 2 d6 shots. 8 shots that hit automatically. Same strength and toughness, so wounding with 4 plus. 5 wounded. With minus 1 penetration, I can save a 3 plus. Ok, all saved except one. With the Librarian in the unit, thanks to one of his skills, the Terminators can ignore wounds suffered on a 4 plus against psychic attacks. One wound saved. So only one wound suffered. The Terminators have three wounds each, two wounds left for my friend. Terminators can finally fire on the Termagants. Let's start with the Cyclone Missile Launcher and with Frag Profile. Being a blast weapon, that's 2d6 plus 2 shots. Ok, that's 8 shots plus 2, so 10 in total. They hit a 3 plus. 5 hits. They wound a 3 plus. Only 3 wounds, what a pity. Saving with 5 plus. To save! Now the Storm Bolters. Thanks to the Librarian's Veil of Time, Terminator's weapons get to sustain its one rule. For every 6 to hit, there is an additional hit. That's 24 total shots at 3 plus. I divide the dice into two groups. First group. 8 hits plus 3 additional hits. Second group. 10 hits plus 2 additional hits. For a total of 23 hits to wound at 3 plus. I divide them again into two groups. First group. 10 inflicted wounds. Second group? 9 more wounds. That's 19 wounds. Really not bad. Saving 19 shots at 5 plus. Only 5 shots saved are not enough to keep my Thermagants alive, so they are all forced to leave the battlefield. So sad. The Librarian can use his psychic powers and use his basic smite on the Reaper Swarms. D6 shots. 5 dice to hit a 3 plus. 4 it's successful. With strength 5 and toughness 2, he can wound a 2. All wounded. With minus 1 penetration, I can't say. V3 wounds per hit? 6 wounds total. Damn, I was hoping to take them all out with the Librarian. That's a model eliminated and 2 wounds left to the other. The Dreadnought prepares to open fire on the Psychophage again. The missile launcher uses the crack profile and makes 2 shots at 3 plus. We roll in the 2 for out of moment. Failed again. 1 dies to wound a 3 plus. At least it wounds. Minus 2 penetration and plus 1 cover, so saving with 4 plus. Saved! Last cannon, 2 hits at 3 plus. Double 6! 3 plus to wound. Rerolling the 1. Wounded. 5 plus to save this time. Just 1 saved. D6 wounds plus 1. 5! So 6 wounds in total. Ignoring wounds at 5 plus. 3 wounds ignored, not bad. 4 wounds left to the Psychophage. The Dreadnought is also armed with Twin Storm Bolters and is finally in range this turn, so it fires at the Barb Gowns, 2 attacks at 3 plus. Due to the Dreadnought's Ballista Strike rule, I can reroll missed shots. Both hit, it wounds at 4 plus, rerolling thanks to Twin Linked. After all these rolls, I still failed. Ok. The Captain fires his Storm Bolter at the Reaper Swarm. 4 shots at 2 plus for rapid fire. 3 dice hit, 2 plus to wound. All wound, great. Saving with 6. Unfortunately, just one save is not enough. Well, they did their job and can now leave the battlefield. Inferno Squad literally fires at the Neurogowns. 6 d6 shots. Oh boy, this hurts! 28 total shots that hit automatically and need 3 plus to wound. Since there is the Tyranid leader within the unit who has superior toughness, I have to roll the dice a little at a time until I eliminate all remaining Neurogowns. Then I roll the rest considering the leader's toughness. We start with 9 dice at 3 plus. 8 wounds. Saving with 6. Just 2. Ignoring wounds with 6 plus thanks to the Psychophage's ability. 1 wound ignored. 4 more dice again at 3 plus. 3 wounds. 
3 more dice at 6. 1 save. Ignore it again with 6. 1 wound ignored. <laughs> what is this? Just let them die. 3 more attacks at 3 plus. Everyone wounds. You know the drill. Saving with 6. None. Ignoring with 6. None again. If you wanted to eliminate them so badly, you could have asked earlier. Finally, the cooked meat of Neuroguns is ready. Now it's up to the remaining 12 hits against the Neuro Tyrant. Due to its toughness 8, they wounded 5. 6 wounds. Saving with 4 plus this time. Just 2. Ignoring wounds with 6. None. What a terrible roll. All the Neuroguns are eliminated, and the Neuro Tyrant is left with only 5 wounds. Those flamers are really annoying. The Stern Guard fires at the Psychophage, 6 shots at 2 plus, due to the heavy rule. All hit, they wound at 6, due to the devastating wounds rule, each wound is a mortal wound. I reroll the dice for out of moment, 2 mortal wounds. Ignoring with 5 plus, 1 wound ignored. Heavy Bolter, 3 shots at 3 plus. I reroll dice, hit everyone, 5 plus to wound this time. I reroll the two failed dice for out of moment. All wounded with a mortal wound. Great. Saving the two normal wounds with three plus this time. Just one save. Ignoring four wounds at five plus. Not even one. Rolling to see if he explodes with six. One. He goes out silently. Thanks to the Sterngard's Bolter Drill rule, once per battle, if they take out a unit, they can fire again. So, veterans fire at the Neuro Tyrant 6 shots at 2 plus. All on target! Strength 4 and toughness 8, 6 to wound. 2 mortal wounds. Now, the heavy bolter, 3 attacks at 3 plus. 2 hit. This time it's strength 5, so 5 plus to wound. None. 3 wounds left to the Neuro Tyrant. Last to fire is the Lieutenant targeting the Neuro Tyrant. 1 shot at 3 plus. Hit. 6 to wound, failed, end of turn. In the command phase, I draw 2 secondary missions since I have none active at the moment. Storm Hostile Objective and Defense Stronghold will be active until completion. Then, my Neuro Tyrant uses the ability Synaptic Relays. Until the start of my next command phase, both the Screamer Killer and the Leapers are considered to be within synapse range of my army. Then, the Neuro Tyrant has to do the Battle Shock test since he's below half strength. He's in range of synapse, so I need to roll 7 or more with 3 dice. 15. I'd say that's enough. At the end of the command phase, I gain 3 victory points for the control of objective 5. The Leapers finally move forward towards the Terminators, and right behind them, there's the Screamer Killer. The Barb Guns move on the second floor of the building to have better view of the enemies, and the Tyranid Prime enters the battlefield at 9 inches from the enemy units. The barb guns start the shooting phase aiming at the terminators and fire 5 DC shots. Since only 3 of them are 6 inches vertically from the ground level, I have to split the shots. 3 of them have minus 1 penetration and the other 2 have no penetration. Rolling the first 3 D6. Being a blast weapon, that's 16 shots. Hitting at 4 plus. 8 hit plus 5 additional hits from sustained hits 1. Same strength and toughness, so wounding with 4. 6 wounded. With minus 1 penetration, I need 3 plus to save. Rerolling with a common point? The first Terminator has been eliminated from the game. I was hoping I could save him. Too bad. Now the other 2d6 with no penetration. 9 shots at 4 plus. 5 hit plus an additional hit when in a 4. Nice. This time, save at 2 plus. Thank goodness, all saved. Sorry, my friend, not your lucky day. The Screamer Killer takes a big breath and then yells at the Terminators. D6 shots plus 3, plus 1 of the blast. 5, that's 9 shots total at 4 plus. 5 shots, plus 2 additional ones wounding at 3 plus for the highest strength. 5 wounds. Penetration minus 2, so this time I save at 4 plus. Okay, 3 saved. That can be fine. 2 wounds suffered. Since the Screamer Killer's breath is very, very heavy indeed, the Terminators have to do a Battle Shock test. I have to roll 7 or more with 2 dice. 
Obviously, the test failed. What a surprise. This unit is butter shocked. On the other side of the battlefield, the Neuro Tyrant keeps trying to eliminate the Inferno squad, shooting them 2d6 shots. 10. Great. Automatic hit, so let's roll the wounds at 3 plus. 6 wounded. 6 dies to save at 4 plus. Only 3 saved. This means 3 other Inferno squad space marines have been eliminated. The Tyranid Prime tries to charge the Inferno squad and needs 9 to succeed. 4 is not enough, so he remains there. The second to charge is the Screamer Killer on the Terminators and with 10 he manages to enter combat. The last one are the Leapers that need 2+. Plus. I think 11 is enough to reach the Terminators. Let's start the fighting phase with the Leapers. They make 18 attacks at 3 plus on the Terminators. 13 hits plus 4 additional hits of the rule sustained hits 1. Same strength and toughness, so wounding with 4 plus. 9 wounds. I need 3 plus to save these 9 wounds. Only 4 wounds saved. 2 more Terminators were eliminated. It's not going too well for them. And it's not over. The Screamer Killer makes 10 attacks at 3 plus on the Terminators as well. 7 hits plus an additional hit. With strength 10, I need 2s to wound. 6 wounded. I need to defend 6 dice at 4 plus. The last 2 terminators are dead. In addition, the librarian suffers 3 wounds. The unit was destroyed. Damn it! The librarian can now attack back and has the force weapon. He targets the leapers making 4 attacks at 3 plus. 3 hits. Strength 6, then he wounds at 3 plus. Only one. Minus one penetration, so saving with 5 plus. Nope. The three wounds? Three wounds! Great! One Leaper is eliminated. The second round saw the Terminators die, but I was able to deal a lot of damage to the Tyranids on the other hand. Almost all their infantry units have been destroyed. Now it's time to deal with the big guys. Having eliminated the Psychophage, I gained three victory points thanks to my secondary mission Bring It Down. I'm pretty confident I can also take out the Screamer Killer and Andrea's two characters. That should be enough to give me the victory. At the end of my turn, I gained 5 victory points for the achievement of the mission Storm Hostile Objective, reaching 15 victory points in total. In this turn, I lost the Psychophage and my Neuro Tyrant is left with only 3 wounds, but I managed to eliminate the Terminator squad and that's fantastic. I'd be even happier if, in the next turn, I managed to eliminate the Inferno squad. At the start of Simone's common phase, I used the ability Shadow in the Warp of my army and force every enemy unit to take the button shot test. Also, the ability Psychic Terror of the Nero Tyrant gives a minus one to every enemy unit. This ability is really annoying. I start testing with Inferno Squad. It needs 7 to pass the test. 8. Great. Now the Lieutenant at 7 plus. Failed. The Dreadnought, 7 plus. And obviously fails as well. He is battle shocked. The captain also needs a 7. Ok, at least he passed it. The stern guard of 7 plus. Failed. They too are battle shocked. The apothecary, 7 plus. Ok, no problem for him. The librarian for some reason doesn't have the role recorded, but he also failed the test. Done! Now let's focus on the nice things. This turn I choose the Tyranid Prime for the out of moment, then I use the Tactical Doctrine which allows my units to fire and declare charges in the same turn they fell back. Since the Lieutenant is battle shocked and doesn't control the objective, I need a character on that marker to score more victory points, so the Apothecary advances and on a 5 he easily reaches the objective. The Lieutenant moves forward. Overwatch. I spend one common point to shoot with my Nero Tyrant at the Lieutenant. 2d6 shots that hit automatically. 8 shots. 3 blasts to wound. 7. Great roll. Um, I didn't expect this. 7 shots to save at 4 plus. Only 2. Oops. The Lieutenant can ignore wounds at 5 plus. It's 2 wounds per attack, so 10 at 5 plus. Ah, I would say that he is dead. But I almost saved him. The Librarian falls back from combat, but being battle shocked must take a desperate escape test. I roll a dice. On a 1 or 2, the model is destroyed. Ok, he's still alive, thankfully. 
The last to move is the captain, who positions himself towards the center of the battlefield. Inferno Squad vs Neuro Tyrant I spend one common point for this stratagem, Rapid Regeneration, to give the Neuro Tyrant the ability Feel No Pain 5 plus until the end of the phase. 3d6 shots. 8 automatic hits, alright! With strength 5 and toughness 8, they wound at 5 plus. Um, the flame is a bit short, only one. Saving with 4 plus. 3. Ignoring wounds at 5 plus. 1. 2 wounds left to the Neuro Tyrant. My leader fires his Storm Bolter at the Neuro Tyrant. 2 shots at 2 plus. Ah, okay. 1 shot. He wounds at 6? Nope. The Librarian uses Basic Smite on the Leapers. D6 shots. 4 shots at 4 plus. The Librarian is a bit rattled. 1 shot to wound at 4 plus. It wounds! 7 with 5 plus. Nope, it goes through. D3 wounds. 2, okay. Now the Storm Bolter. 4 shots at 4 plus. Only one hit again. 5 plus to wound. But in this case, it does not wound. The Stern Guard squad targets the Neuro Tyrant, trying to eliminate him. Not having moved thanks to the heavy ability, they can make 6 shots at 2 plus. 5 hit! Yeah! 6 to wound? Oh, never mind. Heavy Bolter, 3 shots at 3 plus. 2 shots hit, but with a 6 and sustain its 1 ability, that's 3. They wound at 5 plus. 1 mortal wound with devastating wounds and 1 normal. Saving with 4 plus. Nope. Ignoring 4 wounds at 5 plus. 3 wounds ignored. 1 wound left to the Neuro Tyrant. The Dreadnought must take control of this situation and eliminate the Neuro Tyrant once and for all. I use the Crack Profile Arm Missile Launcher and the Twin Bolters against the Neuro Tyrant, then the Last Cannon against the Screamer Killer. Let's start with the Missile Launcher. 2 shots at 3 plus. Single hit. 3 plus to wound. Wounded. Saving with 4 plus. Nope. Okay, important moment. D6 wounds. 6! Need to ignore all 6 wounds at 5 plus to keep him alive. Yeah, didn't think so. The Neuro Tyrant is eliminated. The Neuro Tyrant is dead! Unfortunately, the Twin Storm Bolter was declared on him, so it goes to waste. Last cannon on the Screamer Killer. 2 shots at 3 plus. Oh, Snake Eyes! Rerolling thanks to his ability since the Screamer Killer is above our strength. Much better. They wound a 3 plus thanks to the strength 12. Both! 4 plus to save. Just one. D6 plus 1 wounds. 3 wounds total. I was hoping for more. 7 wounds left to the Screamer Killer. The Captain declares charge against the Tyranny Prime. I really don't want to fight him at the moment, so I spend one common point for the Overwatch and shoot the enemy leader with my bar guns. 3d6 shots. 14. Hitting at 6. 3 hit. And thanks to sustained hit, that's 6 hits total. Wounding with 4 plus. 3 wounds. 3 wounds to save a 3 plus. Okay, the armor did its job. Now, the other 2d6 shots. Only 4. Hitting with 6. Not even one, but that's okay. The enemy captain is disrupted, thanks to the Bab Gun's ability Disruption Bombardment, and has a minus two to every movement he makes, even the charge. Normally I'd need an 8 to catch up with the Tyranny Prime, but with 2 inches less movement, I need a 10. Help. Charge roll. 6 is not enough, my captain can reroll the charge roll. 7. As I imagined, the charge failed. Thanks to the tactical doctrine, the Librarian can charge, and therefore decides to throw himself back into combat against the Leapers. 5. Let's hope he can do some good. The Leapers have the ability Fights First, so they can start every fight. They make 12 attacks on the Librarian at 3+. 8 hit, plus an additional 1. Wounding at 4+. plus. Only 2? I forgot the attack first, oh boy! Two shots to save a 3+. Plus. Yes, he's safe! Now it's up to the Librarian to attack, and he makes four attacks at 3+. Plus. Two, strength 6 and toughness 5, 3+, plus to wound. Two wounds, okay. Saving with 5+, plus. one save. 
B3 wounds. Six. That's three wounds. Second Leaper eliminated. At the end of Simon's turn, I achieve the mission Defense Stronghold and gain three more victory points, reaching 18. At the start of my turn, I draw two more missions, Plants and Overwhelming Force. Then, my last Leaper needs to take the Battle Shock test. Need to roll 8 plus with two dice since it's not in Synapse range. 8! Perfect! At the end of the phase, I gain 12 victory points, reaching 30. My Tyrant Prime flies near the Librarian to make sure he charges and the Screamer Killer goes between the Dreadnought and the enemy Captain. The Bulb Gun starts the shooting phase aiming at the Captain. First 3d6 shots. 16 shots at 3+, plus, thanks to the plus 1 of the rule Heavy. 13 plus 2 additional hits. Winning with 4+, plus. only 5 wounds. The Captain saves at 3+, plus. 1 wound suffered. Now the last 2d6 shots. 7. Hitting with 3+, plus. only 3 hit, winning with 4+, plus. all wound. This time there is no penetration, so he can save a 2+, plus. rerolling the one with a free command point thanks to the captain's skill, saved. The screamer killer shoots the captain as well, he makes d6 plus 3 shots, 9 shots total, hitting with 4, 5 plus 2 additional hits, winning with 3+, plus. 4 wounds, 4 plus saving throw this time. Ah, oh, what a great roll, worthy of a space marines captain. 3 wounds, ok, suffer 3 wounds. Also, he must take a battle shock test for the screamer killer's ability, he must roll 6 or more with 2 dice. Needless to say, it failed, he's battle shocked. Charge! The Tyrant Prime enters automatically in combat. The Screamer Killer needs A2, but I want a little more to go a bit closer to the objective. Okay, never mind. He's in combat. Combat phase, starting with the Leaper on the Librarian. 6 attacks at 3+, plus. 5 plus 2 additional hits, 7 attacks wounded at 4+, plus. 5 wound, 5 dice to save at 3+, plus. you can do it. <laughs> I sinned with optimism, the Librarian was overwhelmed by the Leaper. Now the Screamer Killer on the Dreadnought, 10 attacks at 3+, plus. 8 hit, wounding with 4+, plus. 4 wound, 4 wounds to save a 4+, plus for the Dreadnought, only 1 saved, 3 wounds per attack, so 9 total wounds, nope, it's not so good. The Dreadnought is not happy with the wounds received, and decides to stomp his feet in protest. With its armored feet, it makes 5 attacks at 4+, plus since it has fewer than 5 wounds left. 2 hit, it wounds at 5+, plus. oh good, both! Saving with 2+, plus. easy! Only 3 wounds left on the poor Dreadnought. I am not satisfied at all with how my captain is behaving, his failed charge has complicated the situation and he is now in a very uncomfortable position. The librarian has been eliminated and my right flank is now non-existent. I have to be able to focus on eliminating monsters and characters if I want to win the game, but it won't be easy. At least this turn I eliminated the Neuro Tyrant, which earned me 6 victory points for being both monster and character. At the end of the turn I gained 3 victory points for the mission Overwhelming Force. Both the Dreadnought and the Captain are not in a good shape. In the next turn, if my units manage to survive, I should be able to eliminate both and with that the game would be over. I think that I'll play a little more safer from now on. At the end of the third round, each player has the possibility to attempt a Gambit, which will replace the main mission. We both chose proceed as planned, so we have chosen not to attempt a Gambit. For out of moment I choose the Screamer Killer, then I activate the Assault Doctrine which allows my units to advance and charge in the same turn. Now I have to do the Battle Shock test for my units, let's start with the Inferno Squad, needs to do 6, 5, failed test for them, now the leader needs also 6, 4, <laughs> another failed test, this is the most important test, the Dreadnought at 6. Ok. Luckily it passed the test, so it means it still controls the objective. Thanks to this, I gain 9 victory points for the primary mission, reaching 33. The Inferno Squad begins the movement phase. 
Not so fast. I spent one common point I fired Overwatch with the barb guns on the Infernos. 3d6 shots. 14. Hit him with 6. Not even 1. That's really bad. The other 2d6. 8 shots at 6. At least, here's 1 plus 1 additional hit. Wounding with 4. <laughs> Never mind. At least they're disrupted and have reduced movement. With 2 inches less movement, the Inferno squad moves forward as far as it can. The leader is also disrupted, so it only moves forward 3 inches. The Space Marines of the Inferno squad are not happy about being fired upon, so they return fire on the barb guns. 3d6 shots, 8 automatic hits, 3 plus 2 wound, 4 wounds. Saving with 4 plus, awesome roll! One barb gun is eliminated and one is left with one wound. The Dreadnought is a vehicle, so it can fire while in combat, but with a minus one to hit. Then it shoots everything it has on the Screamer Killer. We start with the missile launcher with the crack profile, two shots at four plus. I can reload the one for the out of moment rule. Only one, three plus two wound. Rerolling the dice for the same rule as before. Wounded. Four plus to save. Not this time. D6 wounds to the Screamer Killer. 5! This is quite a shot! The last cannon, 2 shots at 4 plus. Rerolling both dice. A successful hit. With strength 12, it wounds at 3 plus. Wounded! 7 with 5 plus. Yes! 2 in Storm Bolters, 4 attacks at 4 plus. Rerolling the dice failed. 3 hit. With strength 4, sadly, they wound at 6. Rerolling again. One wound. Saving with 2 plus. He's okay. Well, not that okay, but he's not dead at least. Two wounds remaining. The captain tries to fire his storm bolter at the screamer killer with 4 shots at 3 plus. Everyone hit! I can't believe it! 6 to wound. Rerolling dice failed for out of moment. Nope. Two wounds. Saving again with two. He's still okay. The Star Guard squad target the Screamer Killer. Being a monster, they can shoot him even if he's in combat, but they have a minus one to hit. Nine shots at three plus since they didn't move. Rerolling failed dice. All shots hit. Six to wound. I can reroll wound rolls too. Four wounds. Good. Yeah, better luck next time, I think. Rolling to see if he explodes with six. <laughs> Not even that. Goodbye, my little banshee. The Inferno Squad has the ability Purge the Foe, meaning that when they hit an enemy infantry unit with a flamer attack, that unit has to take a Battleshock test. In this case, the Barb Gowns. They're in sign-ups range, so I need to roll 8 with 3 dice. 8! Lucky them! My leader attempts to charge the Tyranid Prime. Being disrupted, he has 2 inches less movement and needs 9 to reach the enemy. The first charge failed. The captain has an ability that allows him to reroll charge rolls. Again, 7. And once again, the captain fails the charge. The Inferno squad attempts to engage the barb guns in combat and needs 11 to arrive, as it is disrupted too. Third 7 in a row. Congratulations. Another charge failed. At the start of the common phase, I draw one mission. Bring it down, and I spend one common point for the stratagem New Orders to discard the mission clans and draw another mission. Deploy teleport homers. Unlucky. Same type of mission. Then I roll for the Leaper's Battleshock test. Need 8 with 3 dice. 12. Nice! At the end of the common phase, I gain 12 victory points, reaching a total of 45. My Tyranny Prime is the first one to move. Before the Tyranny Prime moves, I use a common point to overwatch him with the Dreadnought, trying to take him out before he goes into hiding. Missile Launcher. 2d6 shots at 6. Double 6! Oh my god! Best roll of the match! 2 plus 2 wound. Both wound. Saving with 6. 1 saved. d6 wounds. 6! Amazing! Ouch! Luckily he can ignore wounds at 5 plus. 2 wounds ignored. 2 shots from the last cannon to hit at 6. Nope. Rerolling a dice with a common point. Missed. Unlucky. Two shots at six with the twin storm bolters. Rerolling the dice because it's off balance. 
Missed shots. Okay, I guess I can't complain. Two wounds left, but he's still alive and flashing cover behind the building. And the Leaper does the same with 16 inches of movement. The bad guns are the only one who can shoot, so they aim at the Inferno squad and shoot everything they have. 3d6 shots, just 6. Hitting with 3 plus since they didn't move. 3 plus 1 additional hit. Wounding with 3 plus. 3 wounds. Save at 4 plus. 2 shots saved. A wound suffered. Now the other d6. 6. Hitting with 3. 4 plus 1 additional hit. Wounding with 3. Just 2. No penetration this time, so save at 3 plus. Uh, double 1. Luck turns fast. One dead and one additional wound. Only two marines left in this squad. The fourth round is over and there are very few moves left to try to end the game with a victory. I am still able to win, but I need several events to happen and the dice luck to come back to my side, especially with regards to my leader who is not performing well at all. We are very close in victory points. I can do it. As I said earlier, I need to play safer. I'm left with only three units and they're all in a bad shape. The barb guns and the building are the only two things that are keeping me alive at the moment. In order to win the game, I need my Tyranid Prime to survive. It will be hard, but not impossible. At the start of the round, I need to choose a target for out of moment. I obviously choose the Tyranid Prime. I have to shoot down that pigeon at all costs. Then I have to do the battle shock tests. Starting with Inferno Squad, we have to roll 6 to pass. Okay, and the first squad is fine. Now the Dreadnought. This is very important. 6. No, I can't let him fail the test. I use a common point for insane bravery, making it pass the test despite failing. And this is done. Now the leader, 6 plus. Terrifying, he failed too. Luckily, his ability allows me to use a free common point to use a stratagem, even one that has already been used in this phase. So I use insane bravery on him too. The captain passes the test. They are not making my life easy, I must say. The Dreadnought must absolutely reach Objective 2 to take control of it and take away additional victory points from Andrea. And I need to prevent him from succeeding. I spend one command point to shoot Overwatch with the barb guns on the Dreadnought. 3d6 shots. 13. Hit him with 6. Just 2. But it's okay. I only need the Malus. Wound him with 6. One wound. 3 plus to save. Oops. Failed. A wound suffered. Now the other d6 shots. 6, great! 1 hit. Wounding again with 6. Unlucky. 1 wound suffered is okay, he's still alive. The Dreadnought advances. No, damn it! With 2 inches less of the disrupted Malus, 3 isn't enough. I use a common point to reroll. Yes, 6! It can reach it! And this too is done. The leader moves forward getting as close to the Tyranny Prime as possible. The Stern Guard moves towards the central objective. The Inferno Squad moves towards the building. The Inferno Squad fires on the Barb Guns. I need them alive, so I spend one common point for the stratagem Rapid Regeneration to give them the Feel No Pain 5 plus ability. They make 2d6 automatic shots. 8 shots, 3 plus 2 wound. 4 wounds. Saving with 4 plus. To save. Ignoring woods with 5 plus? Nope. The Stern Guard squad also fires on the barb guns. 9 shots at 3 plus. 5 hit. 4 plus to wound. 1 mortal wound plus 4 normal wounds. 4 plus to save thanks to the cover. 3. Ignoring 2 wounds at 5 plus. 1 wound ignored. The heavy bolter. 3 attacks at 4 plus. 1 hit only. 3 plus to wound. It wounds. Saving with 5 plus this time. Saved! Last to fire is the leader on the barb guns. 4 shots at 2 plus. 3 hit. 4 plus to wound. Only one wound. Saving with 4. Yes! But these two guys are not feeling so well. This is the most important charge of the whole game. It can decide who will win. The captain charges the tyranny prime and needs 10 to get into combat. Damn, the first dice roll failed, but the captain can roll the charge roll. Please, only charge once in the whole game. 
No! <laughs> the charge has failed, and there is nothing more I can do to win the game. With a score of 45 to 48, the victory goes to the Tyranids. I really suffered a lot following the actions of my leader. I can honestly say that he managed to lose the game himself by failing every single charge roll, despite the possibility of rerolling. Victory has always been within reach right up to the end. Aside from the leader, I'm really pleased with how the Space Marines performed. I enjoyed playing the Leviathan box list, and finally I have new miniatures to add to my Space Marines army. What an intense game! The new edition is really fun and a lot more dynamic than the previous edition. At first, I thought that the Space Marines had a huge advantage considering that the Leviathan box provides 980 points against the 815 points of the Tyranids, but the lack of points is compensated with the quantity of abilities of the army. Can't wait to play another 40k game! If you come this far, we need your help! As you have seen, we have painted the Space Marines of this box in a different color scheme from the Ultramarines we already have. This is because we wanted to create a chapter with the colors of the channel. We have already asked your opinion on the chapter and you have decided to make it a successor chapter of the Salamanders. You have already named the kill team, the Nocturne Sambers. And now we need your help finding the name of the chapter itself. If you have a proposal for the name, an epic name worthy of this chapter, write it to us in the comments and we'll make a vote with the 5 names we like the most. Thanks to all those who want to propose names. Before finishing, we would like to take a moment to thank our members who have decided to support us on Patreon. And if you guys want to support the channel and enjoy an additional and exclusive battle report per month, or see your models showcased in our videos, the Patreon link is in the description. We are waiting for you on Discord. And if you have come this far, write the word disrupted in the comments to let us know. You are the best! And if you are not subscribed yet, subscribe to the channel! If you like the video, leave a like and write us in the comments! We are always curious to know what you think! That's it guys! See you next video!